Hi friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. It's a beautiful day outside. It's a perfect day to plant tomatoes. So let's get planting. So this year I'm going to be planting my tomatoes along this tomato trellis that my husband and I installed a couple weeks ago. If you missed that video, I'm going to link it in the video description so that you can see how to install this trellis. So what I'm doing, you can see that I've lined up my tomato plants along the trellis where I'm going to plant them. This is an eight foot long raised bed and I am going to plant six tomato plants in a single row in it. That's a little bit close spacing. It's a little bit closer than what is usually recommended. Now I'm able to do that partly because I'm going to be pruning these tomato plants to a single stem. We'll talk more about that later in the season. I'm only going to be planting them on one side of the trellis so there will be good airflow on either side of the tomato plants. Another reason is that I live in Connecticut where it doesn't get as hot as it does in a lot of other places. I mean, it gets pretty hot here in the summer. It gets fairly humid, but it's not anything compared to a lot of places in the South. And so if you live in a really hot, humid area, you may not be able to space them as closely as I am. So I have my six tomatoes lined up here. I have six different varieties. As I mentioned, I'm going to be planting them only on one side of the trellis. Now you may notice that my tomato seedlings are not the most beautiful. This year I have had more than my usual amount of gardening issues. And a part of me said, oh, of course that has to happen the year that I start a YouTube channel. I'm basically putting my gardening life out there for the world to see, and now I'm making all these mistakes that I don't normally make. But then I thought about it and I realized it's really more important for me to show you that you don't have to be perfect to be successful. These tomato seedlings are not perfect, but I'm willing to bet that they are going to be successful this season. So hopefully I'm right, we'll see what happens. So when you plant tomato seedlings, I'm going to show you a close up of the stem here. Do you see all those little tiny hairs along the stem? Those hairs all have potential to become roots. When tomatoes grow just as they naturally grow without any interference from us, they just kind of sprawl along the ground like a vine and everywhere they touch the dirt, they're going to put down roots. So we're going to take advantage of that trait of tomatoes today we're going to plant our tomato seedlings very deep. So you can see this tomato seedling here. I have stripped off the leaves up to about here and we are going to be burying this tomato seedling up to about here in the ground. And what's going to happen is all along this stem here, these little hairs are gonna turn into roots. This tomato plant, when I first plant it, it's gonna look tiny, it's gonna look puny, it's not gonna be very impressive. But what's going to happen is it's going to develop a really big root system and that root system is what is going to allow our tomato plant to get really big over the course of the season and to hopefully bear lots of tomatoes for us. Hey there, so this is me from the future. I realized that I forgot to tell you one of the most important reasons to plant your tomato plants really deeply and help them get a big root system is that it's going to make them more drought resistant. You don't want your plant to have a shallow root system. You want it to have a nice deep root system and that will allow it to find water even if there hasn't been rain for a few days, even if you haven't watered for a few days, there's still gonna be water deeper under the ground. And if your tomato plant has a nice big root system, it's going to be able to find that water. So it's going to make things a lot easier on you throughout the growing season. You're not going to have to be as tied down to a watering schedule, which is better for you and better for your plants. So plant those tomato plants deeply. So let's start with this tomato plant right here. This one is an Abe Lincoln. This is a new variety to me. I'm trying it out this year for the very first time, but I've heard great things, so I have high hopes. So we're going to plant this one right here next to our trellis. I'm going to dig a hole. I'm going to bury it about up to here. So this Abe Lincoln is gonna go right here, right next to my trellis. I'm gonna go ahead and dig a hole. You're going to need a pretty deep hole because as I mentioned, we're going to be planting this pretty deeply. Well, okay, look at what I just found. It is a tiny carrot. This is from a seed that I planted last fall that I didn't think ever did anything. And I mean, it didn't do that much, but a tiny little carrot. This is probably not that good anymore because it overwintered, which means that the stem, when carrots come back the second year, they're not going to grow any more carrots. What they want to do is make seeds. And so they start to lose some of their crunch and texture the second year. But I'm gonna see, my daughter's rabbit may want this for a little snack. Now you want to plant tomatoes after your last frost date has passed. Tomatoes are a frost sensitive crop and if you plant them and then a frost comes, it's going to kill them. So 
today is May 11th in Connecticut. Our last frost date is usually considered about May 15th. So technically I'm taking a little bit of a risk planting these, but I checked my 10 day forecast and the lowest forecasted temperature for the next 10 days is 49 degrees. And by then we'll be well past May 15th. So I think that we're gonna be safe. So hopefully you don't see me coming back in a week or two posting a video called what to do if an unexpected frost is coming and how to save your tomato plants or something along those lines. All right, so you can see, I've got a nice deep hole here. So our tomato plant's gonna go, that's about how deep we want it to be. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of fluffy dirt here. Now I put on this bed um, a couple months ago, a few inches of compost. So that's going to be our main soil amendment. I will show you what I'm gonna do for additional fertilizer as soon as we get this guy planted here. So there we go. It's not as tall as it was, but as I said, all of that stem that we buried is going to turn into a big, beautiful root system, which is going to lead to lots of top growth on this plant. Now, I'm gonna put my tag here. We don't wanna forget what kind this is. Now, as far as fertilizing my tomato plants, the main soil amendment is what I already mentioned, several inches of compost on the bed. Um, sometimes I put that on the bed the previous fall, cover it with a layer of fallen leaves. That's really the ideal way to do it. This year, I think I did it in early spring. So it's been here for a few months. The other amendment that I like to use for tomatoes specifically are these organic fertilizer spikes. These ones are Joby's, but I think that there's a few other brands that make them as well. Um, as long as they're organic, I don't know if the brand really matters that much. The reason I like these is because that they are slow release. I can't see if it says on here how long these last, but I'm pretty sure in the past that I've used them and they say they feed your plants for up to eight weeks. So you may have to reapply some sort of fertilizer, depending on the state of your soil. You may have to reapply some sort of fertilizer later in the season. You certainly don't have to use fertilizer spikes. You can, if you have rich enough soil, you may not need to fertilize beyond compost at all. My soil is medium, it's not bad. It was pretty bad when I moved here, but uh, over the years I've built it up, so it's pretty decent now. But I like to do um, this type of fertilizer. You could also just work a granular fertilizer into the soil as well. But I'm going to use these spikes because they're nice and convenient. So I'm just going to take, see, these are stuck together. I'm just gonna break them apart. But see, they're just little spikes like these. So I'm just gonna take four of these and space them pretty evenly around the edge of the plant. You wanna put them about six inches or so away from the stem of the plant to avoid fertilizer burn. You just wanna kind of plop them in here and cover them, push them so that they're about an inch into the soil. So as I said, I'm just gonna put four around each plant. Okay, we got our first tomato planted. I'm gonna get our other five tomato plants planted. I'll meet you back here when we're done. Now, one thing I did want to mention, I mentioned with the first plant that I planted that I had already broken off the leaves along the bottom of the stem. So this plant here, you can see it has more leaves on the bottom. I haven't done that yet. I am going to break this leaf off here. Now you don't want to just take it and tear it because it can make a, it can just tear down the stem. And if the stem is left open, that is going to expose your plant to disease. So what you want to do, if you have clippers, you can do this. I'm just gonna use my finger. I'm just going to pinch it right here, let's see. I'm just gonna pinch it and pull it off. But you wanna make sure that you have a clean break here. You wanna make sure that you do not just rip it because a lot of times it will tear. It'll tear a string of the stem off and then your tomato plant is exposed to disease. So we've gotten all our tomatoes planted. I'm just going to walk you through here and show you what ones we have. Here I've got Cherokee Purple. Here I've got Abe Lincoln, Horizon, Black Beauty, Costa Ludo Genovese, Climbing Triple Crop. That's the bed we planted together, so you've seen those already. Now I will say I'm doing this little mini tour as much for me as for you guys. I want to show you guys the varieties that I have, but I also want to have a record of it for myself in case I lose any of the tags throughout the season. That way I'll know what's what. So let's continue on. All right, this is the bed that's officially cucumbers, melons, zucchinis, all that kind of stuff. I've sneaked some tomatoes into. We've got a Costa Ludo Genovese here. Over here is black strawberry. Now I have a separate bed that most of my cherry tomatoes are going in, but I just put this one in here and another Cherokee purple. You'll notice I have a few Cherokee purple plants. That is my favorite large tomato variety. So I think I planted three of them this year. 
All right, let's continue on and see what else we have. Okay, in this bed here on this trellis, I have six more plants. I have a, a Dr. Weish's, Dr. Witchy's. I'm not sure how to say that one. I have one of those there. Next one over is an Abe Lincoln. I've got a Cherokee purple. You can see I planted it a little bit close to this kale plant here. This kale plant's gonna be coming out soon. I'm leaving it because I think it's going to probably make seeds for me soon. If it starts to interfere with my tomato, then it's gonna have to go. But for now, I'm hoping to let them both grow. Black Beauty again. So you can see some of these, I've left these cups here because this has the name on it. That will help me remember what this is until I get a chance to come out here and put a tag for it, which I better do today, otherwise these are gonna blow away. This is a climbing triple crop. That's a white Thomasol. Now I'm just gonna swing you back around over here. I have two random tomatoes here growing without a trellis. This is a plum regal and that is a sun gold select. These two I was able to plant without trellises because this is a determinate tomato and this is a cherry tomato. So these I'm going to be using tomato cages for, which I do not recommend for most tomato varieties, but I think we'll be able to squeak by with it for these. Now back here, you can see this bed that is overcome with chickweed. Um, this is gonna be ripped out. I need to amend this bed and this is where my cherry tomatoes are gonna go. Here there isn't a trellis. I'm just going to be uh, using tomato cages for them. So now that I've gotten all these tomato plants planted and I've put their fertilizer spikes in, I'm going to water them in pretty deeply. When you first plant really any new plant, especially tomatoes, but any new plant is going to need quite a bit of water to get established. Especially today is supposed to be warm, but not too hot, but we do have some hot days coming up. So I am going to water these plants in. Now one note, when you are watering your garden, especially tomato plants again, but this applies to really all plants, you want to water the best times of day to water Early in the morning is the best time, and afternoon, after the sun is over the peak, that's going to be the second best time. Because if you water in the heat of the day, what's going to happen is the sun is going to evaporate that water before the plants really get a chance to have any. The other thing that is specific to tomato plants, tomato plants are very prone to fungal diseases. And actually, throughout the season, I don't think I've ever had a tomato season where my tomatoes have not gotten a disease by the end of the season. Now, maybe if you live in a very dry climate, you may be able to keep them completely disease-free the whole season. So what I aim to do is to keep them disease-free as long as possible so that I'm able to get a good harvest before they eventually do succumb to disease. One important way to help prevent disease is to avoid getting your tomato leaves wet as much as possible. Obviously, we can't do anything about rain, but when you water the plants, you want to try to water the base of the plants and not the leaves. And that is actually one reason why so many people do grow tomatoes in a high tunnel because they're able to control the environment and they're able to prevent water from getting on the leaves. I'm growing outside, so I don't have that level of control, but I am going to control the things that I can control, which means that I'm going to water from the base of the plant and avoid splashing the leaves as much as possible. All that being said, I hope that you will join me again. I hope that you will really walk the journey of this growing season with me and that you can see what we started today with these beautiful tomato plants. I hope that you'll come back and be able to see the harvest from them. I will talk to you soon, bye. So guys, I planted my tomatoes. I did not wear my gloves. So now I've got a gardener's manicure. Guess that's the life of a gardener, right?